All right. Um, what we want to talk about in this video is uh, this goes by a couple names. Uh, I'm, I'm going to forget exactly what the book refers to it, but we're going to talk about the transformation matrix. Okay. And what we're going to do here is basically take vector quantities and that are expressed in terms of components in one coordinate system and figure out how to mathematically express them in another Cartesian coordinate system. All right. Now the reason we're going to do this is this is going to allow us to develop two and three dimensional truss and frame elements from one dimensional rod and, and um, beam elements. Okay, So it's actually quite a useful way to do this. Uh, but the problem is even more general than that. So imagine we have a vector in space, okay? Here's some vector v, all right? And normally you see this expressed in terms of uh, its components, but its components have to be with regard to a certain coordinate system. So if I just say this vector has components uh, 3 and 2, that's really kind of meaningless unless I reference a coordinate system that we're, or a basis that this is with respect to. So let's say we have this x and y coordinate system, or, you know, from your undergraduate uh, statics and mechanics materials class, a lot of times we also consider unit vectors in the x and y direction and most people call those i and j, okay? So v may, may be 3 in the i direction plus 2 in the j direction, all right? But that's the vector expressed in terms of this xy coordinate system. Now, you could also have an alternate coordinate system. Obviously, there's not just one coordinate system, right? We always uh, draw it relative to a page, but we could have another coordinate system. Let's call it x hat and y hat, and it may have unit vectors i hat and j hat associated with it, right? And in some sense, this coordinate system is also Cartesian. I'm only considering Cartesian coordinates systems in this uh, development, and maybe it's rotated relative, let's do it this way, rotated relative to the one coordinate system by some angle theta, okay? So basically if you take an xy coordinate system, uh, I can never do this, and then rotate it by some angle theta, right? To a new coordinate system, all right? How can we get the components of v in the new coordinate system, right? So V, what are its components with respect to I hat and J hat, right? Okay, they'll obviously be different components, but it's the same vector, all right? Okay, well, if we look at this, and uh, I'll do this in terms of uh, the coordinates here, x, x hat, and y, and y hat. But of course, the same holds for unit vectors, okay? Um, we can write x, if you look at the, the vector x, in terms of, or the, in terms of x hat and y hat. So the x hat has a cosine theta component, right? And so it's going to be cosine theta times x hat and there's also going to be a minus sine theta component due to the y hat. So the y hat projects down here along the x-axis by minus sine theta, right? So minus Likewise we can do the same thing to get the y component Right. Here's the y component, and it's going to have a x hat. It's going to be a sine x hat, but you can see it's actually in the positive direction because it's its projected value is in the positive y direction. So I get a positive sine 
theta x hat and the y hat component projects as a cosine theta. So it's plus cosine theta y hat. Or we can write this as a matrix vector multiplication, right? Where we have cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta cosine theta times x hat y hat, right? So this matrix here, we're going to call the transformation matrix, all right? That's the transformation matrix. And so as an example, let's say uh, we wanted to transform this vector uh, oh, actually, well, I have to do it backwards. Okay, so I, have to, I would have to do the inverse trans. We'll do. I don't want to do the inverse yet. So let's let's do. Uh, um, let's consider another example. Let's do a little simple example here. And this will motivate actually what we're doing here with the finite elements. Imagine here's the x and the y direction. Now imagine I got an element that's at some angle, let's say it's at a 30 degree angle, all right? And there's a force here, an element, the, the internal force in the element of 500 pounds, right? So this is the x-axis of the element, and then there's a y-axis of the element. I know this is a trivial one. You can do this just by basic trig, but I want to show you this more formal approach because we're going to use this, obviously, to do the element derivation. So this might be a little bit of overkill, but, but it still works, okay? So we know it's the force factor, okay, is going to be 500 pounds in the i hat direction, okay, where this is the i hat. All right, that's the element coordinate system. Okay, so what is its x and y components or its i j components here? All right, now I know most people can do this basically by inspection, but what we got here is uh, we're going to use this relationship, right? Now, if it's 30 degrees, this transformation matrix is going to be cosine of 30 degrees rad 3 on 2 minus sine of 30 degrees is minus 1 half sine of 30 degrees is 1 half and then rad 3 on 2 okay and the f vector in its hat components is going to be 500 and zero, all right? And you can't see any of that because I've hidden it. There it is. All right, so the question is, what are the components of F in the X and Y coordinate system, all right? Well, I can just simply apply this relationship. So we know this is going to be 500 and zero. We know the transformation matrix here and so we can get that F, the X component, and the Y component in the unhat coordinate system, if you will, is going to be 1 half. I'm just taking the 1 half out of everything. Minus 1, 1. Five hundred zero, and this becomes uh, rad three over two five hundred. Which is something. You can do it you can put that in your calculator. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. And then the one half times five hundred, that is two fifty, right? Alright, and so these are gonna be the X and Y components, okay? It's the same exact thing as you'd get, obviously. It's 500 times cosine theta and 500 times sine theta, okay? All right.
but this is a more general approach and it works quite well with computers and things like MATLAB, okay? All right? Okay, now we can also take the inverse and there's several ways to think about the inverse, but there's an important property with the inverse and we'll talk about that in a second. But I mean, if we went from the X and Y and rotated it 30 degrees to get to the prime coordinate system, it's pretty obvious that the inverse is going to be taking the prime coordinate system and applying the same transformation but of a negative 30 degrees, okay? Right? Or a negative theta, I guess what I should say. All right? So the inverse, if to go from here, x, y to x prime, y prime, where this is an angle theta, and this is an angle theta. So in other words, the transformation matrix of the angle theta will take a vector in the hat coordinate system and make it a vector in the non-hat coordinate system, right? That's exactly what we wrote here, all right? This transformation matrix, give it the vector in the hat coordinates and it'll give you the resulting vector in the unhat coordinates. Then it seems kind of obvious the, the inverse transformation is going to be equal to that transformation matrix, but with the negative theta, right? So if we're here in the hat system and we transform it or rotate it by a negative theta, that brings us back to the original coordinate system, all right? So we can do that, right? So if this is T, right? Let me, I'll rewrite it. So T of theta, if we use a theta rotation, is going to be cosine theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cosine theta, all right? That's actually a definition, if you will. Then the inverse of that transformation is going to equal that transformation of the negative theta, right? And if we put in negative theta here, that's going to be cosine of minus theta, which is just cosine theta, minus sine of minus theta, if you will. I'll write it out. I guess I should write Put a minus in there. Sine of minus theta and then cosine of minus theta. And this is going to equal cosine theta. Now minus theta comes out, so I've got a minus of a minus, so that's just sine theta. Now here I get the minus sine theta and then cosine theta. All right? So if you look at it, and you compare these two, we have an interesting result, okay? The inverse of this matrix turns out to be the, its transpose, okay? All right? So um, matrices that have this property are called orthogonal matrices. So an orthogonal matrix is one whose um, whose uh, transpose. Well, in, well, let's just do this. I'll show you mathematically. Um, are such that the transpose or the inverse of the matrix is equal to 
the transpose. Okay, and obviously that's not in general the case. But matrices that have the property are called orthogonal matrices, and these transformation matrices are going to be orthogonal matrices always. All right, and I didn't do it by taking the actual inverse, but you can do that as well. You can actually take the inverse of cosine theta minus sine theta sine theta cosine theta. And what do you get when you take the inverse? Well, it's going to be 1 over the determinant. Uh, times, uh, well, you, you end up um, swapping these two, but that's the same, right? And, da, 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 and then swapping those two, right? So sine theta minus sine theta cosine theta, right? And the determinant is going to be cosine squared theta minus a minus sine squared theta or sine squared theta which equals 1 and so it checks out or you can actually multiply these two together and you'll get the identity matrix however you choose want to do it all right all right so it gets a little bit confusing but it's it's really all relative because you know what's hat and what's hat unhat is is kind of up to you but uh um um, yeah, so we have the transformation matrix uh, as given here, right? And if you wanted to find the inverse, for example, if you were given the x and y components and you wanted to find the hat and the unhat components, you would use the transpose of this or the inverse, okay? Um, I think I'm going to stop there. I feel like I didn't do a great job of explaining the inverse one, but uh, I think it's probably good enough for now. Uh, we'll do it again um, in the next video where I actually I'll do the derivation from the 1D bar element to the 2D truss element, okay?